Hey everyone, welcome to Dominion 6. This is turn 1 in an early age game. We're playing as Yor. Uh, in the beginning there was chaos, and now the wheel has turned once again. It'll be a fun game. Uh, right, let's go over the basic stuff first. If you skipped the intro video for this series, uh, I'll just show off, here is my god. If you want more details about this guy, you can check out the intro video. He's a golden lion, we've got some fire and nature, magic. He's awake, gonna be doing some expanding. And our bless is extraordinarily simple. Basically just some leader leadership stuff. Uh, which is nice, we can recruit a bunch of junk everywhere. And all of our mages are sacred, so... It turns them into good leaders at least, to lead around all that junk. Uh, and we're on a in-game map generator map, and we've started on a coast, which is kind of surprising. Uh, <laughs> there are no underwater nations in this game, I don't believe. And the map... I don't think has many water provinces either, but here we are next to at least five that we can see. Probably a lot more. Uh, which is odd. We do have water magic on our nation, so I guess we could... We could just forge a ring of water breathing at some point, stick it on our guard and probably take some water provinces, so it's not too bad, but... Um, yeah, surprising anyway. Uh, Cap Circle also looks kind of... We don't have any resource provinces, which is a bit interesting. We've got three plains and a wasteland, and technically a sea as well. Uh, in the case of Ur, or Yor as I like to call them, uh, a lot of our units don't really need many resources though, so this might work out quite well for us. Hopefully these three plains are quite high income, that would be really nice. Uh, the lake is 49 income, so no luck there, but probably going to be a while before we take that anyway. Uh, right then. I think that's the basics, so let's get down to it. Turn 1, usually pretty simple. We have an Awake Expanding God. Uh, I think we can get away with sending him out on turn 1, so... He's just been given all of our starting army, which is the Enkidu Soldiers. These guys, I mean, they're not much to write home about. They have pretty average stats. They aren't wearing much armor. They do have pretty decent morale, but I guess that's because, yeah... <laughs> they're being led by my God, who has all that leadership at the moment, so... Although, to be fair... For most of this game we should have great morale for the same reason, because of our bless. Uh, we'll see how that works out though. But yeah, pretty, uh, not much to really say about them. They do hit fairly hard, I suppose. Uh, but most importantly, we can just get out a lot of them, and we start with a lot of them too. Uh, gonna be heading out with my god. Probably gonna send them into Kunal. I think based on the size of the province, Dophoros is likely to be the highest income. But I'm a bit nervous that this is a peninsula, that we won't be able to expand very far in this direction. I think it's, you know, there's definitely more land here. I think we're going to send our god into Kunal here with the army. And next month we'll also move that, plus our profit, plus the stuff we recruit this month, into Timiglia. And then we'll uh, send our god off solo. Possibly over back towards Dophoros. And our profit can continue on to the south. I think that's the general plan. We'll see how it works out. If I went up to Doe for us, in order to, you know, bring my profit over, we'd have to take Kaz Dupar, which I don't... That's probably the province you want to get last, because it's just a wasteland. So I think it makes more sense to go into one of these two provinces first. So we'll do that. Uh, God and the units are just at the back. We're just holding and waiting for any enemy units to walk towards us a bit and split up. And we shouldn't have any problems. But we'll see how that goes. Scout can go in the other direction. Probably through Dofras just to get an accurate report there. And then we'll see if there is any more land to the northeast. That'll be nice. And recruitment this month is, yeah, still just a bunch of Enkidu soldiers. We can get an awful lot of them. Uh, and why not? I stuck a hornblower in the end too. Probably not going to need a standard because, as I said, we have a very high morale blast, but I mean it's less expensive than another unit which we can't get, so hey why not, we'll just slap that in too. <laughs> and uh, get a starting researcher as well, Salme. Again with our blast they have 110 leadership, so they'll be fine for leading stuff around. Got some inspirational as well. And for the time being they are fine researchers as well. All our mages are sacred so they don't have as much upkeep as otherwise. And research per turn? Sure, why not? we got magic on our skills, so that's 11. And that's it for the basics on turn 1, other than uh, sorting out our profit. Now, our god is named, my opponent is wrong, here's why. So let's do an extremely low effort gag, and call our profit uh, fat plus bald. 
Which, you know what? I think that fits these guys as well. He can become our prophet. And he can merge up with the army next month. Otherwise, I think that is it for all the stuff we need to do on turn one. There is a pretty nice mercenary company, but I don't think it's worth bidding on them when our expansion should be absolutely fine. It's probably best to just get out um, more units this turn. I suppose there's an argument to be made that it's worth, because our expansion would be good, it's worth just taking these guys so that somebody with weaker expansion doesn't get them, but uh, I don't think that's a very high value move. So let's leave it there. And I'm just going to submit a partial turn while I check the video. And then I'll see you momentarily. Hello, welcome back. Uh, turn two is usually just spent reading some proclamations, so let's read some proclamations. Uh, Arcocephaly, we have Sea Urchin Flavor Shaving Cream, is the prophet of Salmon Scented Deodorant, King of the Healing Arts, Banner of Victory. Uh, Pyrene, we have The World Turned Inside Out, is the prophet of The Land Down Under, Mistress of Hunting, Goddess of Horses, The Womb. Agartha, we have Stone Strength, the prophet of The Beginning of Dominions, King of Kings, Prince of Rain, Master of Air. Inom, we have Name a Prophet, 5 points, is the prophet of Dominion 6 Achievement List. The Most High, the Gentle Flower, Giver of Riches. Uh, there's us, your Fat plus Bald is the prophet of My Opponent is Wrong, Here's Why. Our epithets are the Leaf Lord, Patron of Languages, and Collector of Things Lost. Nothing too funny, unfortunately, but... Vanheim, we have Very Bisexual Elrond. He's the prophet of Wes Anderson's Lord of the Rings. The Remote and Inaccessible God, Prince of Suffering, Bane of Men, Patron of Human Sacrifice. Helheim, we have 70% Urine by Mass. He's the prophet of Infinity Pool, the Burning Soul, God of the Waves, <laughs> Nourisher of the Fields, the Everburning One. At Rus, we have Sergei. Oh, is that an unnamed prophet? I don't know. We were on such a roll there. The prophet of No Bake Oreo Cheesecake. Patron of Berserkers, Enemy of Darkness, Lady of the Wild Cows. <laughs> That's a great epithet though. And that is it for proclamations. Uh, yeah, we also get to see where all of the thrones are in the world. So, fantastic. I'll look at that in a second. First up though, we have our first battle. Turns out it is pretty puny. So nothing too interesting to see here. We have some you heavy infantry. That is a shrub. You are heavy infantry and some militia, some archers. Yeah, very basic stuff. I'm not gonna hold up to my god. My god has a lot of invulnerability. 25. So mundane stuff is gonna have a really hard time arming him. And the Enkidu, Enki dudes <laughs> are uh, you know. Just here for moral support more than anything, you know. But uh, yeah, not much to see here. Pretty easy to clean up. So we are on the board, province-wise. Uh, province Not a great pickup. It is 60 income, 30 resources. And yeah, Dofaras is the biggest uh, province we can see, 126 income. Unfortunately, it's quite a lot of barbarians. 70 barbarians I don't really want to send my god into. Might have to come back for that in a couple of turns when we have more units. Uh, which is a shame. But at least we go into turn two with a province, so we have some additional income already. Which is something. And yeah, I can also see all the thrones now. There are two right next to us. Uh, this game is pretty unique amongst games on this channel as well, because uh, it actually has some level one and three thrones. Usually the games I join only have level two thrones, so get to see some things like the Throne of the Stars. Throne of Autumn would be quite nice, would give us some death mages. Uh, second Age, nothing too interesting. Abundance is in the game. <laughs> that seems like a really valuable throne, even if it does give us sloth. And uh, Pantocrator is a ton of Dominion spread, plus conflict bonus. Sun would be really nice as well. There is an Ubar in this game, so having some fire res on our troops would be nice. Plus a lot of our mages can do bark skin, can't they? So uh, yeah, nice to put fire res on the mages. Nice scales there too. Uh, yeah, but that's it for messages and stuff. And here's the map now. And plan is still the same. 
cannot see the stats on these provinces. Can see Kazdupara is 40 income. Pretty puny. Uh, we'll just head into Tomiglia next, though. So our profit is coming with our god, all this stuff. It can just all merge up into Miglia, and then we'll split it up next month, go in different directions. And I don't suspect we'll have too many problems uh, expanding, as long as we don't see too many Barb provinces. Barbs will give us some difficulty until we have a much larger number of units. But uh, that's okay. We'll also see what this throne looks like as well, if we move here. Might be able to do it early. Our god can take some quite... You know, if a throne just is fairly weakly defended, my god with a few distracting units will be able to take them quite easily, I think. But we'll see. Uh, Recruitment-wise, just getting another bunch of Enkidu soldiers and another Salmi. That's fine. And besides that, not a lot to say. Uh, I will point out, though, that over in Kunal, yeah, outside of our forts, we can recruit a bunch of stuff, including these guys, which I would really like to start getting out as well. Uh, it'd be nice to put a lab down somewhere and start recruiting them. Uh, and I'll start getting some longbow dudes out as well. We can get longbows out of um, all of our out-of-fort provinces, so... Early age longbows doing 16 points of damage isn't too bad. Uh, we can put poison arrows on them quite easily. And my god can even do flaming arrows, so... I'll start spamming those when I can. And besides that, I think that's everything. So far, so good. Uh, we shouldn't have any problem with Timiglia since it's just Deer Tribe, which is one of the weakest uh, tribes, I think. And the scout can just push on to the northeast, see what else we can see up here. And besides that, I think it's everything. There is another mercenary company. It is Ergek Beast Brother this time. Not quite as impressive as Dante, but <laughs> they do their best. Anyway, that's it for turn two. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you on turn three. Hello, welcome back. Uh, battle in Timiglia. So, just a few deer tribe. And we have even more force than last time, so... As you can probably guess, we don't really have any problems here, but... You never know. Maybe our prophet randomly gets hit by an arrow and starts bleeding and dies. <laughs> it could happen. But no, there's Tamiglia. Uh, lost two Enkidu, but that's, uh... They just do that sometimes. <laughs> anyway, here's the mountain arrow. Yeah, I can see a bit more. I can see that there is a farmland here. This might be a decent place for a fort. It's a farmland with three resource provinces around it. It's a shame it's not quite an easy move from our cap to get here, but... Well, can't have everything. I'll try and get to it anyway. And I can see there's some light cavalry and heavy cavalry here behind the heavy infantry and archers. Yeah. Anyway, this turn, uh, we're going to split stuff up. My god is just going to pick up Shadowglade, because it's a decent income province. Um, it is Woodsman and Woodsman Blowpipe. Should I be scared of that? Is that going to have, like, Dark Vines that do some weird stuff? I don't know. Maybe I could do it the other way around if I'm scared. Uh, see how that goes. I guess it... Hmm. There's no way I'm going to bump someone here, right? It's way too close. <laughs> that would never happen. I'm not sure what's best. I'm pretty sure this is going to be easy, right? My god can do this, I'm pretty sure. Uh, no, I'll just send my god into the blowpipes. I don't... I'm just, you know, nervous. It might be some weird stuff. can't remember if you can... Would I be able to see if there was going to be, like, Bloodhenge druids and stuff here? I'm not sure. I'll just send my god into that anyway. We'll see how he goes. It's a 87 income province. Probably closer to 100 income when our scales move in fully. So it would be nice to pick up. So far we've got 65 and 69 income. Yeah, we don't have any like huge high value provinces next to us other than the Barb province, which I can't quite get yet. So we'll grab that. Profit army will go into impassable. He's now got 43 units, so he should be safe for quite a while. Um, there's an argument to be made that I should double back and get Kazdu Pass, that I could lock in some of this territory early. But uh, I'd like to leave this for the next expansion army we send out to take, which will be next turn. We already have 25 units here. We're getting another 15. 
So that's 14, uh, 40 units that can attack this next month. Feels like we need to get Kazdupar, Dibrithia, and this province, and then that just locks everything behind these two thrones in for us, doesn't it? So yeah, it would be nice to get those as early as possible. We'll see what happens, though. But now, yeah, we'll send our god into Shadowglade, Prophet into Impassable. Scout's going to go to Dibrithia, we'll see a bit more of this territory. And next month we'll have a new expansion army. I'm going to recruit two independent commanders in these two provinces. And then there'll be someone hanging around then to lead these longbows. We'll start recruiting. Next on the agenda. And yeah, this month I'm actually switching from the Enkidu soldiers to the Ur gods. So, slightly better gear. They are also castle defenders, which I guess that's cool. <laughs> but we'll start getting those guys out now instead. How many resources in this province actually? 36. Um, what are we locked on currently? Yeah, resources, okay. And that's fine though. Not much else to say. There's no new mercenary companies. I will show off research. Um, at the moment I'm just trying to get enchantment uh, to a personal region for our god. Makes them a bit safer. You shouldn't have too many problems with most indies, but just in case he bumps into a player or something, having some region would be nice. And then we'll grab Evo 2 for web, which I'm pretty sure has been buffed in Dominion 6, right? Certainly it has a shorter cast time. I don't think it used to be AoE 3 either, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, but this looks like a nice one for N1 mages to spam, so we'll grab that. And see what happens after that. Otherwise though, not much to say. Things pretty simple. Seems to be going okay though. Uh, next month will be turn four and we'll have five provinces, so about as good as you can hope for. And things should start ramping up from there. So I'm going to hit end turn. Thank you for watching the video. Hope that you're enjoying it. And hope that I'll see you in the next one.